Hey there everyone, my name is Bucky Shepard from the Guys of the Games. Back with some more Halo 2 on Legendary. Also, that guy went over to the left, that's I'm different. In, Usually both go on the right side, that's funny. <clears throat> Back with Halo 2 Legendary on the MCC Collection. Collection? <laughs> Did I just call it the MCC Collection? Holy. The MCC Collection. Ah, uh, Metropolis. This level is a... Uh, I mean, it's it's Halo 2 Legendary, so it's still, you know, it's still Halo 2 Legendary, but, uh, it's definitely, like, a fair drop in difficulty for a lot of it, because, well, because for the first part of the level, you're just driving on a tank, and tank makes it, you know, a lot less annoying, because Halo 2's vehicle section, for the most part, uh, even on Legendary, they're actually, like, pretty well balanced. They're actually, like, most of the vehicle sections are, like, way worse in Halo 3, where you get, like, Sniped out of your vehicle by other vehicles. It's ridiculous. Whereas in this game, it's like, yeah, no, like they send a shit ton of ghosts at you, and like, nah, you just kill the shit out of them. I think the pr part of it too is Halo Three really likes putting you into ve vehicle sections where you're in one warthog against like a bunch of other vehicles. Whereas in this game, it's like most of the times you're in a warthog, you don't really fight too many other vehicles, so it's not that bad. Cause you can see like we're already like halfway up you know we're already almost at the point where the bridge starts going down and it's like man barely even gotten shot i mean it also helps that the halo 2 tank is just like the strongest tank in the series i mean it, i said it, it's actually you know weaker in multiplayer that's that's a fun fact for you like both the scorpion and the wraith are weaker in multiplayer where uh they like the way they're weaker is basically just their main cannon shoots slower Ow. Alright, shoot you so you're not. Ow! Ow! And that dude shoot me from 20 miles away. Alright. So there's you. I'm gonna shoot you right now before you're an obstacle. Ow! Yeah. Yeah, like, that's pro this is probably the scariest part right here. And it's only really scary because, like, they just have a habit of kind of all showing up at the same time. There's another Banshee over here, but for whatever reason, he's, like, I don't, I wouldn't call him bugged. But for whatever reason, he's way slower than the one on the left side. I guess the right, from my perspective, left side of the bridge. So it's very easy to just do this. Like, he t like if you don't shoot him right away, he does tend to snipe you because, uh, Banshees can shoot you from really far away. They're like one of the longest range vehicles in this game. And like off the top of my head, I can't think, I don't think any other vehicles will shoot you from farther away except for like, like Flood and Scorpions and uh, I guess, uh, Raids. I mean, technically, like Marines can drive Scorpions in this game. It's just they don't generally do that. Like, this, th this Scorpion, I think, is specifically set up so that they can't. It's the, the seat's reserved, so they will never try to drive it. And there aren't really any other... I guess there's a Delta Halo. I think they actually can drive on that level. It's just usually you don't let them. But, I mean, if you really want to, they can. It's just, it's also because, like, you know, on Legendary especially, like, they, don't, they tend to just die. And you only get so many Marines. I mean, yeah, the fact that they give you the double marines here with rockets also kind of makes it... It's like, man, this vehicle section is just made to be easy. Like, I guess they just wanted to give you a breather after getting sniped all of outskirts. I mean, outskirts also has vehicle sections, but once again, the vehicle sections of outskirts are the easiest part, so I mean... Okay, that guy's probably dead. The vehicle's health system in Halo 2 is really nice. I think people tend to be like complain about it because they don't like the idea that being tougher makes your vehicle tougher. And I understand that point, but having the Halo Reach, I, I even I call it the Halo Reach system because like some people will say Halo 1 has that system too, but Halo 1 only has that system in campaign, and it's also just for Covenant vehicles. The Warthog and Scorpion still work with taking you know your scorpion being shot still hurts you and warthog and like vice versa and all that jazz but 
I'm gonna back off because I'm a little slow. Yeah, and this happens. I'm. These guys might actually kill me. This is the scariest part. I'm dead. I'm gonna die. Come on, please. Okay. Yeah, everyone just died. Like, holy. That's the part where you're punished for either not being super aggressive or for being not aggressive enough, I guess. You have to either go right, in, like, you need to go right in there or you just need to back off right away. It's funny, the rates are, like, rates are kind of fragile in this game. That's kind of, I guess maybe that's what you would consider part of the problem. Rates? Right in front of my eyes, Bungie, you sons of bitches. There goes all the rocket ammo. And it's not that big a deal, but it's like, man. Yeah, the Halo, like, I, the Halo, cla I, I, I'll, I'll just call it, like, the, the classic trilogy system of vehicle health. I think is a, a necessary evil, because in Halo Reach, vehicle sections kind of blow, because you're, it's basically just shoot things until they blow up. And it's kind of one of those things where, like, uh, like I don't even know. Like, there's so many weird things with it that, like, yeah, it's it's very annoying in this game. In this game especially, because like you get okay, you'll get elite ultras occasionally in vehicles that just make the vehicle like literally, like an elite ultra and a ghost is tougher than like a, an elite miner and a wraith, right? It'll take more shots to kill that ultra elite because he's so fucking tough. But like. The alternative is where, like, it's bad both for campaign and for multiplayer. It's bad in campaign for you because it means that having longer vehicle sections like this, for example, like this one we just did, for example, you can't really do it. Like, you can give us more scorpions, I guess, but, like, that's, it's a, I don't know, it's a weird way to handle it because it means you have to get out and get into another vehicle. And if your vehicle gets fucked early on, you're just kind of boned. Like, there's just a million things that can go wrong. Uh, I'm just gonna... Yeah, so this is what makes... This this part normally sucks, but... Uh, the trick is to just bring the scorpion over the thing. Who the hell is shooting me? Oh, look at you, jeez. Wow. I've taken... That dude almost, like, took out my shields, and that's, like... The closest thing to dead I've been, other than the Banshee. Which is kind of funny. I mean, the one nice thing is that since those rocket marines are dead, they can't shoot me in the back. Which tends to happen specifically in this area because it's so much... Like, it's not that they're bad shots, it's that there's just so much crap to hit. What's the talking about? Right, the vehicle health. So, like, it's, it, you know, it's a thing, you know, but, like, ultimately, it, like I said, it's a necessary evil because it means that you don't have to worry about extended vehicle sections like getting boned because your war dog blew up early or something you just have to hoof it it also means you can't cheese enemies because like the irony is that a lot of enemies are actually tougher than their vehicles in halo reach especially like high ranking elites like the easiest way to kill them all the time is just like get them to like jump into a vehicle and then you can just pew pew the, the vehicle and it'll die faster than the enemy would especially because Vehicles, like, all vehicles actually do regenerate health, but it's, it, like, they have the actually the exact same system as enemies, where they have a recharge fraction amount. But for most vehicles, it's fairly low, and it also takes a long time to do it, and, like, because it's so low, they only really recharge, basically, it's there so that, like, vehicles don't stay one shot away from death from a DMR at all times. But... That kind of still happens. Is where's the zealot? How'd you not think about it? Oh, there. Nope, that's not him. Is that him? There's a zealot here. There he is. He's literally no threat. I mean, even if I wasn't in a tank, like this area is not built for him. I mean, if zealots could jump around like they couldn't heal a one, it might actually be scary. It'd be sweet to watch them jump over vehicles and try to get at me. But uh, yeah, that doesn't happen. Alright, so here's the dealio. I could just get out of the tank now, but there's almost always a sniper jackal just chilling. Uh, like, whatchamacallit, like chilling in the little tunnel corridor. So we're just gonna plop on over if I can. It's a little tricky to go over this one because you can't do it the same way. You have to kind of just... Because the thing with getting the scorpion over, it kind of requires you to do... Uh oh 
No, no, no. Maybe I'll just suck it up, Buttercup. Oh yeah, these guys. Well, I'm gonna shoot them first. I forgot. These guys are another case. Like they're probably, I think their script is like weird. Like they're supposed to wait until like, like they're supposed to ambush you, but like they tend like literally like you can see they're like they just don't care. You have to shoot them before they actually do anything. So they kind of suck at their jaw. I don't know why they're like this. I forget. Cause you like it's not like they're they're, they're not broken in uh outskirts. It's just. You think they would just use the same script, but I think it's a little different. It's basically just like those guys. Those guys actually are just kind of weird in general. Like I know that there's uh, there's scripts that like when you get far enough to level, like deletes all the enemies in the tunnel. But like those guys don't get deleted. They just like ignore it. Okay. Threat neutralized. Cause there's usually a guy in this fucking tunnel. I don't know what makes him show up there. Like, sometimes he's there, sometimes he's not. I have no idea. I'm actually going to try to do this again, because I'm terrified of him. Because, ironically, one of the scariest places to see sniper jackals is close quarters. Because not only is it... Close quarters means their, like, projectile spread is less relevant, but also they just react, like, react faster. There's a sword that I could pick up, but I'm not going to, because, like... There's really never a situation in this level you can really use the sword outside of this tunnel, really. Because the next area is just snipers, basically. And then, I guess there's the scarab, but the scarab is freaking, like, packed full of ultra, like, the ultra elite and stuff, and it's just not worth it. Oh, oh, oh come on. There we go. We got him. Kind of. Oh, maybe not. Uh-oh, I'm going to die again. Ooh, okay. Well, you know, maybe I hang around long enough that the sniper jackal's just like, yeah, he's like, he's bored now, you know? Well, I baited a shot that's good enough. Where's the crate? There's usually a crate here that has beam rifles. Where the hell is it? It's supposed to be like right over here. Is it like gone? Am I crazy? Maybe I'm crazy. What was I talking about? Right, the vehicle health. Uh, obviously, it sucks for multiplayer because it means that vehicles are basically just glorified power weapons. And the irony is that people say that it makes it's like one of those things, but that like prevents vehicles from being overpowered because like you know in Halo Three, like a good strong warthog driver can just go forever technically. But like it also means that killing people in vehicles is obnoxious because like as soon as the vehicle's on fire. What do you think they're going to do? They're just going to get out. They're not going to let you kill them. So, like, you do all that damage, you're not even going to get a kill out of it. You're just blowing up the vehicle so they can get it back later. Where's the Marine? Did she die? Did I crush her back? Am I stupid? Did I totally bone her with my shenanigan? You know, I could bring a Warthog, which might not be a terrible idea. I was about to walk under that. I bet you that would have killed me. Scorpions are very good squashing here. Um, where is everyone actually? There was a second ring. Did he die too? Because there's the B there's the BR guy and the shotgun lady. You know Donna from that '70s show. Who do who forgets her? I don't even know the name of the actor. I just know the character because of course I do. Frick. Uh, well, I guess there's nothing here. You know, uh, I explained how, like, uh, weapon firing for AI works in the last part. That was terrible. I That explanation took me so much longer than it needed to, and I explained it in, like, the most, like, obtuse roundabout. Like, I just, I sucked at it. It took up, like, uh, how long? Oh, wait! How did I not notice this? Here's the stupid crate. Thank you. I guess that was a good thing, at least. Yeah, it took me, I, I explained it in such a terrible way. And now I'm going to burp because I ate a piece of cheese. You know, that's me. I got, I, frick. All right, time for everyone's favorite part where you just get sniped. Like, the, the best way to do this is to just 
You've got to be fucking kidding me. That guy almost sniped me from the grave. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Do this. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. I'm gonna try to get a checky if I can. I don't know if you can get a checkpoint here by waiting, but I mean, if I could, it'd be nice. Because I know the cyber jackals, the, the one nice thing is they tend, in this area, they tend to kind of hang out on this spot where I am right, right now, but like above. So if you just kind of idle around, uh, it's not too bad. What was I talking about again? I keep trying to go, right, yeah, the round, the, whatever. I sucked at explaining it, you know, just, you can look it up yourself on assembly or whatever. I mean, probably talk to other people. I, I say that, but like, uh, I guess, uh, whatchamacallit, C20, the library is, like I said, it's a great resource. There's two of them? Look at those psychopaths. All right, here's what we're going to do, though. Let's back him up, you know, because he can actually take a shot. You've got to be fucking... Dude, he's going to die. He can't... You've got to be fucking kidding me. This guy's missing all his shots. I like the worst spot, too, because as soon as I drive out there, I'm just going to get sniped. All right, well, let's just go. Literally, the best way to do this is just... Say, fuck it. All right. Now we're going to get killed in this area, because this area also sucks balls. And there's more snipers, by the way. So you just kind of have to hope you don't get sniped. And I didn't get sniped. All right. <laughs> like, that's the really, it really is the best way to do the part is just fuck all of it. Who cares? It honestly sucks balls to do that part. Oh my god, dude. Can you hit your shots? He's, I don't know why his aim is so dog shit right now. Jeez. All right. So there's snipers next area. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to hopefully get a checky here. She says that, but then, like, the, the snipers are really good at just sniping out of your vehicle. Hey, this guy's this guy actually made it. Get in. Alright, so the best way to do this part is to hijack a wraith, but I'm just going to take it nice and slow. Also, I'm going to quickly head over here, because there's a third wraith will spawn. I forget what triggers it exactly. I think it's, like, a certain damage threshold. It doesn't have to be you kill one of the wraiths, but it has to be, like, you have to do, like, enough damage or something. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but I think as long as you've driven over there, uh, it won't come back. I, you know, I wonder. Do you think it's worth? Well, you know what? Here's here here's here's a handy trick. I was gonna try to go back to the other area. Like really, like this is the what you should do. Uh, this guy's a BR, so I gotta do this or else he won't actually trade with me. Oh, fuck it. Man, they're so good. No, 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 no. Get back here, son of a bitch. There. There we go. I was going to say, I was going to try to go back to the previous area, because I think, like, once you go far enough, all the enemies in the previous area, like, disappear. Because that happens a lot in Halo 2, because Halo 2 just kind of can't handle all that AI. Even though they're not in the same area and they might not be doing much, they're still taking up resources, so... Anyways, we're going to back off, because the rocket guy has pretty good range, so he can kind of just do this. And as long as you drive slowly, the rates are bad. They don't really lead their shots. So, just kind of do this, and kind of takes care of itself. There we go. I think these guys are always ultras. Or well, at the very least, it's a very high chance of them being ultras. It's like, I don't remember. Because that guy was always an ultra, because he took on, like, three direct rockets, plus all my goshog shots. Ah, uh, I didn't notice this guy was in. Well, it's unfortunate, but it's not worth risking my life down there, because if the rocket guy dies, this part becomes way harder. Or I should say more tedious, because it's not even particularly hard. Vehicle section and heal, too, just are rarely ever difficult. It's mostly just a case of, you just want to be careful... Because, like, the, it, even though you can't, your vehicle can't blow up, you can still, if, in this part, for example, if I lose my marines, it's like, it's just, like, you kind of don't have much of a choice but to hijack the rates. Uh, oh, right, the vehicle. Man, I cannot finish my thing about vehicle health. Well, 
it sucks in multiplayer, like I said, and then that. Uh, something a lot of people don't actually realize that Halo 3 kind of solves the vehicle health problem in a way. Oh, the Pelicans actually come. I forgot about that. That's nice. So in Halo 3, I think, I wonder if I've mentioned this before. Sure they have, but Halo 3 actually has a, a system where uh, vehicles have, like, like in every Halo game, like, vehicles have different damage multipliers. So like, obviously shooting a dude that's in a tank doesn't do as much damage as, say, someone else shooting at someone that's, like, in a ghost. But, like, and the, 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 how they do that changes from game to game. Like, Halo 1's is very simple. Then Halo 2's is more complicated. Halo 3, Halo 3's is actually uh, pretty in depth, and more importantly, kind of solves the problem like I was talking about. Where uh, vehicles, pew, man, I love that. Vehicles in Halo 3, like you're actually less, you essentially take more damage when you're inside damaged vehicles. And there's like three levels of this where it's like when it's like f like mostly fine you take regular damage or whatever you might consider regular damage and then you have like damage where it's like it's somewhat damaged but not like super damage where you'll start taking more damage than a like a undamaged vehicle and then if it's like heavily damaged like for like a scorpion like if it's on fire you'll take even more damage so basically it's like this system set up to just make it so that uh it's still kind of like I think it honestly does mostly solve the problem because like vehicles that are more damaged basically take more damage essentially that's all it is and it does that without having to make it so that damaged vehicles are just a death trap that you just get out of the second they're on fire while also obviously making it so that like in campaign for example uh, it's not miserable All right, so you have to be careful here because you do not want to get sniped. That that tends to happen, especially because like the the way the scorpion or the scarab move can make it can make it kind of hard to go into cover sometimes. Because you'll think like, oh, I'm in cover, and then you'll get it'll move in a weird way, and you'll get sniped or something. Look at that fucker, he's ready to go. He's on a moving vehicle. He's gonna snipe Master Chief like out of his fucking asshole. Holy shit, he was like, he was sniping before I could even see him, man. Now, we're just gonna wait. Because I do not want to get sniped. It'll be a lot easier to snipe them when he's on, when he moves up ahead, I guess. I'm being greedy. Should be fine. I'm sure anyone that's, uh, seen, like, uh, Felv Adams, or... Actually, what's his... I forget his channel name. Phil Adams, like the name of the Arbiter or something. I don't remember, but uh, Miss, Miss, the the guy who's doing Halo 2 Restored, Halo 2 Uncut. Uh, is probably if you've seen those videos, you know, like the Scarab here was meant to be like it had, it had like uh, like what you call it, like Pelican guns on the side of it, and that's partially like the reason why they give you so much rocket ammo here, and for whatever reason they. Remove that? I'm not sure why. Because here's the thing. A lot of the stuff they removed here is purely just because, like, it, the, the Xbox would not have been able to handle it. Like, the game chugs enough already. A lot of the time. So, like, there's no way it would have been handled on the original Xbox. But, like, the chin guns, for example, it's like, they, they barely had resources because they're just a turret. So, like, they're, they're fairly minimal because it's not, they can't, like, the turret can't move... Like, there's just a lot of reasons why I feel like it's weird that they removed... But then they, like, left all the ammo still here, you know what I mean? He shoots at it if you wait long enough. A lot of people don't realize that's how... That's, like, the implication of, like, how... Oh! Who are you?! He was hiding forever! Holy shit! An absolute, like, genius! Alright. I'm gonna chuck an aid. Screw you! Alright, so the Ultra Elite's gonna show up, and uh, I'm just gonna snipe him. And thankfully, Sniper does enough damage that you can just do that, and he dies. 
Full clip kills him, thank god. Even on legendary, sniper is just so good in this game. For some reason that guy was like shooting even though he couldn't see. Like I I never saw him. Like I guess I must have shown up like a second because I popped out to stick the grunt, but like these guys are weird because like they're in like a weird state where like like they're basically it's like the game is pretending that they're driving, but they're not really driving. They're just like in a they're just using like a special animation because they're scripted to. And then they're scripted to stand in like those spots by like being attached to it. Because like there's kind of driver seats. But obviously if you know anything about Halo 2 that's not really how the Scarab isn't an actual vehicle. There's just spots that like there's nodes that are like attached to it. They're like let it you can like be attached to you know. And in this case they use it to attach the dudes and put them in special animation. Hmm. And you know that they're not actually driving it because, like, if you shoot them with, like, a rocket or something, they'll actually, like, move around because they're not actually in the seat. They're just standing in that spot. Uh, yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's a FOV clip. Yeah, on the original Xbox, but you know what it's like for just a split second there before I skipped it? You can see that the camera clips into Miranda's hand because the FOV is just different. And uh, I, I already, I mean, everyone knows about this. I even have a video about this now if you want to watch it. But uh, yeah. Check out these guys. Oops, ping pong time. The drivers get deleted, but the Phantom itself is left intact due to the fact that they deleted it in a command script. That's another video that I, I kind of rushed that video out. and It, it doesn't necessarily talk about things as accurate as I could because basically the answer to my to my thing is that it's broken because they get deleted in a command script and it's broken and it's specifically because it's in a command script and it just deletes their squad instead of just deleting them directly like it, instead of using current squad it del just del manually deletes their squad in the command script which the game doesn't like because of weird scripting shenanigans and hey, if, how many people know, don't know, want, like, how many people know about this? Normally if you just walk, like, because these guys are, like, weird. So, basically, uh, if, like, the game always tries to give priority to story stuff, which makes sense. So, like, if Spec Ops is talking, while he's talking, there's, like, a special command that is set up to basically make it so every AI unit will just not say anything, no matter what. Uh, I think they might still react if, like, you shoot them. Like, they'll still make grunts. But they won't, like, say words, basically. They'll just make, like... The, the, at the most, they might make noises. But, uh... That includes this situation. And because of that... Uh... They, they, usually, like, everyone just walks forward here and you don't get to, like, see this. But if you actually sit around and wait for Mr. You know, Sockman... Spec Ops Commander Halfjaw to actually finish talking... But, before you walk up to these dudes that are standing here by the bridge, or the little pathway, they actually have a thing they say, first lance in position. Like, and they each have the, they can each say it, because it's just, like, it's a thing. It's another cool thing, Halo 2, and I guess Halo 3 by proxy. Every Halo game kind of has this now, but, uh, it, like, chooses a random person to say it, so, like, one of the two can say it. So you can get... You know, both voice lines can say, you know, first lance in position. Uh, I'm not going to play this, though. I'm going to say this for next time. Metropolis is a pretty short level, and it's pretty easy. I didn't even die, did I? That's actually kind of crazy. I did it deathless. Like, I didn't even mean to. And it, it, it wasn't... It, it's not because of skill. Like, I got super lucky during the outside part. Where the stupid sniper jackals just spam you. Because ultimately, it just kind of comes down to you just kind of hope they don't snipe you, because they can. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I doubt I'll ever show any of this off, because there's a lot of it, but... Uh, the funny thing is, this level actually has a shit ton of, like, dialogue that most people will never hear, because it's basically that Spec Ops man there. Like, you just saw he talked. He has a ton of dialogue. Like, pretty much every every single like section in this level 
if you just sit on and wait and don't do anything, you'll he'll he'll basically have something different to say. Where it basically just tells you to stop you know, doing nothing and keep going on with the mission. And, you know, it's always different because you like specifically to say like you know what's the next place to go and whatnot. Like they don't want you to get lost essentially. Like Bungie, like I I guess that maybe this is like Whiplash from Halo One where people got lost all the goddamn time. Even though Halo One, it's it's. Funny, I think people would get lost because a lot of people just have no sense of direction. Like, no offense, guys, but, like, people get lost on Salt the Control Room, and it's like, dude, there's literally arrows on the floor showing you where to go. Like, I don't understand, but, like, even in the library, it's like, at most you have, like, it's like, there'll be, like, a split in path, and then, like, you'll go one way, and it'll dead end right away, and then you go the other way, and, oh, look, this path I took has a bunch of floods showing up. Maybe that's the way I go, you know? Like, it's just common sense that, like, you walk down a spot and, like, oh, there's enemies to shoot at. This is probably where I go, you know? Like, like no offense, once again, but it's just, like, man. And, like, I don't even consider myself to have a particularly great sense of direction, but it's just, like, come on, man. Like, the only place I think legitimately it makes sense to get lost is at the start of 343 Guilty Spark, where there's just a huge swamp you can explore. Because, like, if you just don't go straight you'll get lost very quickly which is very reasonable because there actually isn't really anything telling you where to go it's just it's very easy to get stuck but like even in that level it's like as long as you just hug the corners you, you, you'll find your way eventually but uh i mean 343 gifts is basically meant for you to get lost so it makes sense but uh yeah this level like i said just shit ton of dialogue that you'll just you'll never hear unless you just every time you finish literally basically any firefight you just stop moving for like five because some of it like you have to wait a while for some of it like you can literally have to sit there and wait for like five minutes it's like that doesn't sound so long in a vacuum but like when you consider like most areas take like 30 seconds to walk through it's like that's a long time anyways uh yeah that'll be it for this part see you guys later